In a remote Cooper Basin of South Australia, a lone pilot geothermal plant once stood against a backdrop of red desert. A pioneering attempt to tap the Earth's hidden heat from ancient volcanic rocks. Australia's landscape today is one of relative calm. The continent sits in the middle of a tectonic plate, far from the ring of fire or rifting zones that spawn active volcanoes. Yet the absence of modern volcanoes doesn't mean Australia's subsurface is cold. In the depths below, an ancient heat lingers, born of geology that is subtly extraordinary. Eons ago, Australia did experience volcanic activity. One can still find evidence in the now dormant volcanic provinces sprinkled across the continent. From the basalt plains of Victoria, home to the youngest volcanoes, active only a few millennia ago, to ancient calderas in New South Wales. However, the more pervasive source of heat lies in Australia's basement rocks themselves. The granites in Australia are the ancient, now solidified magma chambers, some of which fed large volcanoes on the surface when Australia was volcanically active, and some of which cooled and solidified deep underground without feeding any volcanoes. Many of the granites underlying the continent are enriched in radiogenic elements like uranium, thorium and potassium. As these elements decay over millions of years, they generate heat. Normally, that heat would slowly dissipate to the surface, but in certain regions, nature has set an insulating blanket above the hot granites, layers of sediment or volcanic rock that trap heat below. The result is a hidden cauldron, expanses of hot granites that have been slowly warming up over geological time, awaiting discovery by energy explorers. One famous example lies deep beneath the Cooper Basin, a remote area spanning the border of South Australia and Queensland. The Cooper Basin is better known for oil and gas, but underneath the gas fields is a buried treasure of heat, a massive body of granite that is both highly radioactive in a natural sense and insulated by overlying sediments. Drill bits traveling four to five kilometers into this basin encounter rock temperatures of over 280 degrees Celsius, comparable to conditions near active volcanic zones. Geologically speaking, it's remarkable here in a stable craton, far from any plate boundaries, lies heat in the same league as Iceland's volcanic crust. The Cooper Basin granite is what geologists call high heat producing. It contains an unusually high concentration of heat generating minerals. Moreover, it was unroofed and then blanketed. Once uplifted close to the surface in a distant past, it later got buried under sediment, which both allowed it to cool, developing cracks, and then insulated it. Mother Nature inadvertently set up the perfect geologic heat trap. Australia has several such hotspots of potential. Geoscientists mapping temperatures at depth have found extensive areas where temperatures exceed 200 degrees Celsius at 5 kilometers underground. These tend to coincide with the right ingredients. Crust thick with radiogenic granites, anomalously high heat flow from the mantle in spots, and deep basins of insulating sediment or volcanic cover. Unlike conventional geothermal fields, these Australian resources are often dry, lacking the water and open fractures needed to circulate heat naturally. In geothermal parlance, they are unconventional resources, hot but impermeable or dry. To tap them, one must supply the missing ingredient, either water, permeability or both. The scale of this untapped heat is staggering. By some estimates, the amount of heat energy in Australia's upper crust at under 5 km depth greater than 150 degrees Celsius is practically limitless on human timescales. One analysis noted that extracting just 1% of the heat in the rocks hotter than 150 degrees Celsius and shallower than 5 kilometers could yield about 190 petajoules, roughly 26,000 times Australia's annual energy use. These figures boggle the mind. It's energy for centuries. If only we can engineer a way to bring it to the surface. Yet if is the key word. How do you coax heat from dry, impermeable rock buried several kilometers down? This is where Australian ingenuity stepped in, with pioneering projects aiming to answer that very question. Around the turn of the 21st century, a handful of Australian visionaries took up the challenge of Australia's hot rocks. Their goal was nothing short of revolutionary, to create Australia's first hot dry rock geothermal power plant. In the early 2000s, a small company named Geodynamics Limited set up camp in the Cooper Basin, not far from Inaminka, a tiny outback town that became the unlikely backdrop for cutting-edge geothermal experiments. The project was often referred to by the evocative name Habanero, hinting at the extreme heat buried below. 
The plan was daring. Geodynamics would drill the deepest onshore wells in Australian history straight into the granite basement. At nearly 4.5 to 5 kilometers deep, these wells would penetrate the rock at temperatures of 250 to 300 degrees Celsius. But unlike drilling for oil, the aim wasn't to strike a fluid reservoir, it was to create one. The concept, originally termed hot dry rock or HDR, and now known as enhanced geothermal systems, EGS, was to inject water down one well at high pressure to fracture the hot granite, effectively opening up sealed cracks. This would form an artificial underground heat exchanger, a region of newly cracked rock permeated by water. Then by drilling other wells into that region, the water could be circulated, injected down one well, heated through the fractures, and lifted up another well as steaming hot brine. It's akin to creating your own geyser deep underground, in a place where nature didn't provide one. By 2013, the Habanero EGS pilot plant was finally operational. Geodynamics successfully circulated water through fractured granite at around 4.3 kilometers in depth, producing water at 215 degrees Celsius at the wellhead. The team built a small 1 megawatt electrical power plant, essentially a demonstration turbine that ran on geothermal steam, and connected it to their wells. For 160 days in 2013, this tiny power plant hummed away in the desert, marking the first time Australia generated electricity from an engineered geothermal reservoir. It was a milestone, born of persistence and science fiction-like vision made real. The Habanero pilot proved several things. It confirmed that Australia's hot dry rocks could indeed be harnessed to produce electricity, a major validation of the EGS concept on Australian soil. It showed that water could be pumped into 250 degrees Celsius granite and safely circulated to the surface. The system even achieved closed loop flows of about 19 kilograms per second and sustained them continuously for over 50 days. In open flow tests, allowing the well to flow freely, they measured higher potential, up to 40 to 50 kilograms per second if unrestricted. These rates were encouraging, hinting that a larger commercial scale system might deliver significant power output. Yet for all its technical success, the pilot plant remained just that, a pilot. When the test ran its course, the facility was put into care and maintenance, awaiting the next phase. Geodynamics had plans for a full 25 megawatt demonstration plant in the Cooper Basin, which would scale up the concept and prove commercial viability. The idea was not only to generate electricity for the grid, a challenge given the nearest grid connection was far away, but also to use geothermal heat for industrial purposes. One proposal was to supply process heat to gas facilities in the basin, such as aiding in shale gas processing on site. This synergy, using geothermal to support fossil fuel extraction, was somewhat ironic, but practical. It provided a nearby customer for the heat, solving the problem of being in the middle of nowhere. However, the next stage never quite materialized. By 2015, the project had faltered, largely due to economic and strategic hurdles. The global oil price slump made the gas producers less keen on an experimental heat source. A major partner, Chevron, pulled out of a joint venture in the area, and without a committed customer or investor, Geodynamics could not justify further expensive drilling. The Australian Renewable Energy Agency had co-funded the pilot, but commercial capital was needed for the scale up. With no immediate path to profit, the company eventually wound down its geothermal operations. In 2016, the Habanero wells were permanently sealed, and the site rehabilitated. It was a sobering moment, a moonshot that reached the sky, but not orbit. Geodynamics was not alone in these efforts. Another company, Petrotherm, drilled an EGS well in 2011 near Paralana in South Australia, in the Flinders region. They found hot rocks as expected, but could not secure funding for the crucial second well needed to complete the circulation loop. Without that, the project stalled. Across Australia, by the mid-2010s, dozens of geothermal exploration licenses had been granted, a minor hot rock rush. But few projects progressed to deep drilling. The initial enthusiasm cooled off when results proved technically challenging and investor patience ran thin. So why is it that a country brimming with underground heat has yet to replicate Iceland's geothermal glory? The Habanero and Paralena experiences highlight some of the core challenges of harvesting energy from hot ancient volcanic rocks. One major challenge is technical complexity. Drilling several kilometers into hard granite is not easy. It pushes the limits of equipment and drives costs high. The extreme temperatures, 
well above 200 degrees Celsius at depth, can be punishing on drilling tools and well casings. In Habanero's case, specialized techniques were needed, and there were hiccups along the way. Another challenge is creating and sustaining the reservoir. Unlike a natural hydrothermal field, where water and steam flow freely, an EGS reservoir needs to be engineered. High pressure water injection is used to induce fractures, a process analogous to hydraulic fracturing used in oil and gas, but typically at even greater depth and temperature. This must be done carefully to achieve a connected network of cracks that can sustain circulation. Sometimes the rock doesn't cooperate fully. Fractures may not connect as hoped or may close over time. In the Cooper Basin, for example, the granite had natural fractures from ancient times, but they were sealed by minerals. The project had to quote unquote wake them up with pressure. They succeeded to a degree, but the permeability of the reservoir remained relatively low, limiting flow rates. Closely related is the issue of induced seismicity, essentially man-made micro-earthquakes. When you crack rock kilometers underground, the earth shudders, albeit usually imperceptibly. Most of these induced quakes are tiny, but on occasion they can be felt at the surface. There's also the geographical factor. Australia's best hot rock resources are often in remote central or northern regions, far from cities or transmission lines. This contrasts with, say, Iceland or Kenya, where geothermal sites are relatively close to where power is needed. The tyranny of distance in Australia means any large geothermal plant might require new transmission infrastructure or local industries to use the power on site. This adds complexity to an already daring venture. And yet, none of these challenges is an outright showstopper. They are problems to be solved with time, innovation and will. Just as early explorers of oil faced dry wells and blowouts before striking it rich, Geothermal pioneers accept that there is a learning curve to mastering the Earth's heat. After the flurry of activity and subsequent lull in the 2000s, one might think Australia's geothermal ambitions died out like cooling lava. But recently, there are signs of a renewed spark of interest. Driven by the pressing need for clean, always-on energy in a climate-conscious world, researchers and companies are revisiting the idea that Australia's hot rocks could be the key to its energy future. The Australian government's own assessments indicate optimism. By 2024, interest in geothermal surged again. The number of exploration permits and applications jumped dramatically. This spike suggests that companies are positioning for a second try, likely encouraged by improved tech and a policy shift towards decarbonisation. Australia's geological story is indeed unique. It is a land that outwardly cooled off. No smoking volcanoes dot its horizons. Yet on the foot it harbours an immense heat reserve, quietly generated over ages by the decay of primordial elements. It's like a sleeping dragon, dormant, not dead. Australia's hot dry rocks may have slipped out of the spotlight for a time, but the narrative is far from over. With new chapters unfolding, the prospect of geothermal energy from ancient volcanoes could yet move from inspiring documentary to tangible reality, lighting up homes and industries with the power of Earth's primordial warmth. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.